Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. So, a lot of attention this week on the emergency, which was, of course, 43 years ago, ago, and many people, including the vast majority of people in our audience, in fact, probably the vast majority of people in the country, not, not born then, and so some may well have been scratching their heads and figuring out what was all the fuss about. Obviously, it's a very important period in India's history, the only period where India was not actually a fully functioning democracy. Uh, and that has been one of the biggest areas of pride for India, of all the countries that got their independence in the 20th century. India, one of the very few countries which has always been a functioning democracy with that brief little aberration. Now, why the emergency was discussed so much this week on the 43rd anniversary is, of course, something that we are going to be discussing during the course of this, this program. Um, the Congress will say it was political reasons. I'm sure the BJP will have its own take on it. But it's important also to look at that question because some of the other factors that come, that come to bear, such as the fact that it was possible and feasible at that time for fundamental rights to be suspended, for the freedom of speech to be suspended, for the press to be gagged, for institutions to be systematically subverted. We have to all ask ourselves that question, could that ever happen again? Uh, there are some, of course, on the Congress and our opposition side who are saying it's already starting to happen, institutions are being subverted as we speak, and that, again, something that we will be discussing during the course of the show. But what can we do to make sure that our institutions are not ever subverted in the manner that they were between 1975 and 77? That, I think, is an overall lesson we would like to draw from this, from this program. And we have a great panel joining us with this. Let me start off by saying it's a, it's a pleasure and privilege, as always, to have Mark Tully with us, who uh, I think was thrown out of India during the course of the emergency. It was one of the periods where you were, you were, you were not allowed to be here. So you know, I'm sure you can share some of those memories with us. It's also a privilege to have with us uh, uh, Kalpana Sharma, uh, uh, independent journalist, columnist, somebody who very courageously kept on. I, if I remember correctly, you, you, you know, you were you were working at, in, in Himmat at that time and. Name, name made a lot of sense because you displayed a lot of courage, Kalpana, in you know, standing up against emergency and talking about it and, and fighting for the institution. So it's great to have you with us. Pavan Varma, here to tell us whether he thinks it could ever happen again or it couldn't happen again. Sandeep Mahapatra, member of the RSS. We've, we've also had a lot of discussion over the course of this week about the specific role that the RSS and other organizations like that uh, uh, played in this entire process. It, uh, it's great to have with us Pranav Jha, AICC secretary, who can maybe tell us what the Congress party makes of a, a, a lot of this. Um, Vineet Goenka, it's national convener of the IT cell of the BJP, also been you know member of the governing council and, uh, of the CRIS and the Ministry of Railways. Good to have you with us. Um, and, and a couple of other guests I just want to welcome onto the program. Chandra Bose, it's a, it's a privilege to have you with us also. Vice President of the, of the BJP in Bengal is also a rights activist, so maybe you can help us understand things from that point of view. And finally, Jawahar Sarkar, you know, a senior bureaucrat, can maybe help us understand. Uh, he's also written some open letters uh, or joined uh, uh, some bureaucrats in recent times, writing a letter, open letters to the government warning about the erosion of institutions. So great to have all of you with us. And in a couple of minutes, I'm also going to get Salman Khurshid, a uh, very senior Congress leader, on to discuss the emergency with us. Why don't I start with you, Samak? First of all, you know, the emergency itself. Are you somewhat bemused that it got as much? I mean, normally you had this much attention on the 25th anniversary and the 50th anniversary. This, this time, it is almost as if some political points were being scored on both sides. Yes, well, I, I suppose it is unusual in a way, um, and I, 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 I myself associated with the run-up to the election. We are definitely in that run-up period now, and I assume that the BJP considers this is a good stick to beat the Congress with, because of, after all, there's no doubt the emergency was declared by Indira Gandhi, and there's no doubt that uh, the emergency um, was, as you've said, a breach uh, in the democracy of India. So if, if you look at it in isolation, it is uh, a good stick for the BJP to beat the Congress with. But if you look at it all in the overall context of today, uh, well, then there are questions about what is happening now, which the Congress can rightly ask the BJP. 
Right. Pavan Varma, I, are you somewhat uh, surprised that this entire issue was raised? Because he's right. It's obviously a stick with not just the BJP, but the entire nation has been beating the Congress with for the last 43 years. Look what you did. The emergency was a blot on, on the history of independent India. But I think Samak is right that this time, it's sort of also, you know, you had a lot of those tweets that were being made by the government, which were, some were saying, well, you know, it applies to you as well. Well, frankly, I think the emergency was a very substantial subversion of the constitution and of democracy in this country. Now, it happened 43 years ago. Much water has flown down the Yamuna. Mrs. Indira Gandhi was punished for it. She won an election again. There have been countless elections since then. What, why the scale of the recollection of the event is not for me to answer. We have uh, worthy spokesmen uh, from the BJP or the affiliated organizations who can explain it. But I will say, no one in our democracy should ever forget that something like the emergency could have been imposed. And therefore, vigilance and the need for vigilance, especially among the young who may not have seen such an event, I think that is important. And okay. from there, I have some other conclusions to draw, which if you want, I'll sum up very quickly now or later. Uh, I'll, I'll come to them to get you to sum them up in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. President Chad, before I come to, you know, why it was the thing, does the Congress party recognize that this is a dark period, not just for the country, but for the history of the Congress party itself? Uh, thank you for asking that question, Vikram. And uh, more than you and my fellow panelists here, I think we owe it to the generation here who has not experienced it, has not seen it. And I'm not sure if they can read it correct in the books that will be available for them to read. The power of the government in center and the power of money to influence information, it's something that we are seeing today. Opposition is ceding, it's I mean, getting less and less space to tell its part of the story. What is amazing to us also is that a government which was given a mandate for so many things, a government on its own with its alliance of 332 seats, has forgotten a manifesto of four years old. A four-year-old manifesto has been forgotten, and they have gone and hidden themselves, buried themselves for <coughs> an even 43 years back. What is the compulsion? What is it that they are running away from? I mean. Okay, uh, one but interesting point. Let me just throw that to Chandra Bose, Prana, and, and you have something else to add? All right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there are issues. I mean, are they trying to hide away from the, the okay. failure? Fine. I, I, let me ask that, throw that to Chandra Bose, and I'll come back to you on that. Chandra Bose, Pranav is saying that the fact that you're talking so much about the emergency is that there are obviously other issues that you don't want to talk about. Uh, rupee comes to mind. Foreign policy comes to mind. I mean, there are actually lots of issues that could possibly Border come issues. To mind. <laughs> well, there would always be certain issues which we need to address. But we cannot forget the 21 months of dark days that India, independent India, experienced on the 25th of June 9, 1975. You see, Article 352 was invoked. Now, an emergency under this article is normally done if there is a state, if there is an internal and external threat to the state. But there was no internal or external threat to the nation. There was a threat to the existing Prime Minister of India that time, Srimati Indira Gandhi. Yeah. Let's actually, actually, the, can I, can I just invoked? say something? Let's agree for the sake of argument that what happened in the emergency was wrong. I mean, let's all, so we don't need and, to actually almost contesting that. revisit that particular issue. It was a, that it was a dark period in Indian history. It's without doubt why it was bad. We know why it was bad. The suspension of, of liberties, the suspension Freedom of fundamental of rights. It was a very dark chapter. The people of the country came out and said what they thought about yeah. it. They voted the Congress government out. They threw the Congress government out at that point. So we don't need to look at whether it, as to why it was bad. Yes, it was bad. I think the question that we are trying to ask is, 
what are some of the lessons we should draw from it and also why are we talking about it so much 43 years later is the second question that I think was being asked. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the lesson is, the lesson is this should not repeat. We must not have a repetition of the nightmarish 21 month period. It was not necessary. The nation didn't demand it. It was a demand to throttle democracy. The democracy was murdered, was killed. And the issue is so many people in the opposition, stalwarts like Jai Prakash Narayan, Lal Krishna Adwani, George Fernandez, Atal Vihari Vajpayee were imprisoned. 6.2 okay. million people were sterilized forcibly, which is six times more than the Nazi Party that what Congress they did during that, the so Second that... World War. Yeah, you want to and say the so other I'm... thing is yeah, your really media. Important. Press, Mr. Bose, press was completely gagged. Mr. Bose, there was I think no that press freedom at all. That is an yes, important. Yes, we know. Uh, you, Mr. Bose, yeah, that's an important part that so you're invoking. So this cannot be repeated. And if yeah, I'm so agree with you, it can't be repeated. But I'm going to come to that such. point. Yeah. yeah. The the point that I agree, I agree to what you're it saying, is, and I what I want to add in the presence of this young generation is that Srimati Indira Gandhi, when she was alive and she when she went to contest election in '78. In, uh, in, in Yavatmal on 26 June itself, she said that she regretted what happened. She knew that she had done a mistake, and not just once. I'm told, and uh, Mr. Verma is here, he'll, uh, he'll correct me, that on three occasions, and later on, the next Congress president, Srimati Sonia Gandhi, in an interview to uh, your channel itself in 2006, she also said that she was uncomfortable. So, so the point that Congress wants to make, that We've all learned our lessons, and the nation has moved on from a struggling, uh, a dependent nation. It became self-independent. Self it became a prosperous nation. We became the fourth largest economy in the world, okay. and we are doing fine. So you're saying that the Congress Party has apologized for it. Can I just, We've Kalpana Sharma, Kalpana Sharma, let me just get you in on it. From somebody who lived through it <clears throat> uh, you know, in a very direct manner. Some of these, so why this issue has keep, keeps on coming up is some of these questions that are being made. That, let me just quote to you, for example, what the Prime Minister tweeted just a short while back on the 25th of June, actually. India remembers the emergency as a dark period during which every institution was subverted and an atmosphere of fear was created. Not only people, but ideas, artistic freedom were held hostage to power politics. Let's always work to make our democratic ethos stronger, he went on to add. Writing, debating, deliberating, questioning are vital aspects of our democracy, which we are proud of. No force can ever trample the basic tenets of our constitution. I think all of us would agree with that completely. Arun Jaitley, just a day before that, had said, the lesson from the emergency is that if you curb free speech and allow only propaganda, you become the first victim of propaganda because you start believing that your own propaganda is the truth and the full truth. I think everyone would agree with that. There are very few people who would disagree with that entire premise which has been laid down there by the Prime Minister and by the Finance Minister. Kalpana, if I can just ask you, as somebody who lived through that, how do you make, how do you respond to the immediate reaction to many of this that came from people saying, I mean, the Congress, for example, was to say, you guys are saying this, but you are guilty <coughs> of exactly the same thing right now, only you are doing it in a quieter manner. Yeah, I mean, to me, first of all, um, as Mark Tully said, to me, it's extraordinary that they pick 43 years to suddenly remember the emergency with such fervor. You know, the BJP I'm talking about. Um, it should be, of course, recalled every year, and I think people ought to be taught about it. But I think the important thing is that they're reducing it to this issue of personalities and Indira Gandhi. Whereas the issue, I think, really is that what the emergency taught me, I was in my 20s at that time, is that you cannot take freedom for granted. And you cannot take, certainly as a journalist, I realized you cannot take press freedom for granted. That is something that we have to think of even today. Because just as Mrs. Gandhi systematically attacked the institutions uh, that upheld democracy, the same thing is happening today. So I think it's, a, it's irrelevant to have this kind of focus about did she apologize? Was the Congress responsible? Of course it was responsible. That's history. But what are, why are we talking about the emergency today? Because of the lessons it has taught us about what we need to do to strengthen democracy in this country. And that is the honest question we have to ask. Is democracy stronger today? Is the press really free as it ought to be within a democracy? Is it questioning? Is dissent allowed? The manner in which it ought to be allowed in a democracy? Or are people who are dissenters 
uh, called anti-national, are uh, harassed and even killed. I mean, what kind of democracy is this? That is that is the focus that ought to be on the discussion, even if, oddly enough, 43 years on, suddenly the BJP has woken up to uh, talking about the emergency. Right. Um, Ma'am, I'm just going to come back to you on that on that front. Vineet, would you, would you agree with her that today we need to be still concerned about some of those very same factors that you were talking about, maybe getting repeated now? Uh, well, thank you. I got a chance to speak now. <laughs> so I'll tell you, for me, emergency is like the Holocaust what Hitler did. Honestly, I'll give some figures. I in the Holocaust, six million people. Yeah, were yeah, yeah, I am coming on that. I'm coming, and I'm giving supporting with my data. More than six million. One lakh ten thousand eight hundred six. Let, let me quote the numbers. One lakh ten thousand eight hundred six people arrested under MISA. MISA. Seventy-five thousand eight hundred eighteen arrested under Defence of India Act. Now the total goes to one lakh eighty thousand people, which is recorded. How many thousands not recorded, not been told to this world, not known? A, B, and we can't forget even if you forgive. Ask for forgiveness, Turkmenistan, where the young un unmarried Muslim youths went through sterilization, the Nazbandi, who could not even see this world's this thing. That is a Holocaust, nothing less than Holocaust. The Holocaust should die only once. Here, yeah, this is too much. <laughs> hang, I, hang on, hang on. I had, I had okay. total uh, patience to hear whatever he said. I'm Everybody said. I'm going to get you on the Holocaust yeah, yeah. comparison. So, Samak, would you part, like to? I mean, yeah, I'll tell you, and no, the third no, part, I, I, I'll I, come I, on I, that, see, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir uh, let the youngs know this. The third part, sir. This is not me which who is speaking about this. Let me remind you, if you can read a book written by N.K. Singh, the former director of CBI, what he says in his book. The book is very simple, Plain Truth, Memoir of CBI. How his family suffered just because he arrested Indira Gandhi and Sanjay Gandhi that time. No, I so this is a... Look at the CGI. The CGI who was appointed, the total curbing of judiciary. Well, was CBI was jumped three judges and then he was appointed there. So total disregard and disrespect to the at judiciary. The age of, at I, the age of nine years, I went out campaigning against the emergency and saying that the government 20 seconds. I'm in here. Hang on. A but one thing. more thing, you know. No, I not think. only judiciary, not only police, not only this thing. They didn't even allow Kishore Kumar to sing song. I it was terrible. We have all agreed. I'm not no, disagreeing that it was terrible. Of course it was terrible. Seven so months pregnant ladies but you forgot the worst double. part they threw Mark Telly out of the country. No, I mean like no, imagine no, no. I respect him, but, <laughs> but I'll tell you respect him, but at the same yeah. time you can't forget See, people who were not born, the kids who were not born, the pregnant ladies been put in the police station and treated like common criminals. Okay, I get that, I get that but, but Mark they want Kelly, to ask forgiveness. Sorry, uh, rather I should one create point. a memoir pause button, in Lucas pause button for a minute, minute. I, I get how terrible it was. I mean you know mm. how terrible yeah. it was because you lived through it, right? Mm. So did Kalpana. But a comparison with the Holocaust and Arun Jaitley saying that her imposition of emergency echoed Hitler's Reichstag epi uh, episode. Is that overdoing the yeah, analogy? No, I, a little I, bit? I, I think it's I think it is completely uh, incorrect to compare the two. Where were the gas chambers? Where was the genocide? How many people? Yes, lots of people were arrested. Yes, many deplorable things happened. No one would defend so, Jalil, them. I don't have a tendency no, but, of but, but wait, wait, to wait, 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 yeah, how many? People, I mean, like how, how many it wasn't people like seven million people being killed. Worse than that, sir. That very few. Worse than that. They were locked off. See, pregnant more ladies. More than seven they, million they, people. No, no, numbers don't do that. They, but why should you kill a single lady who is seven months pregnant? They, they will. Okay, okay. Like, okay. okay. Samak, Samak, finish what you were saying. Well, I, let, let, let know, him finish what you were saying. I, I just, I, I would just say very simply, where was the genocide? Where was, where were the gas chambers? Without them, you cannot compare this no matter how bad you think it was, no matter how deplorable you think it was, you cannot compare this uh, with the Holocaust, in my view. Okay. You're, you're making, I mean, are you stretching the analogy a little bit? You don't need him do that. The dark saying, era. We'll so it's it. not about judiciary, it's not only about political parties. We'll counter it. We'll counter what about press, media? Ramnath Goenka itself had to go with blank pages because yeah, they were yeah, no. yeah, I'll tell all you, all of this goes please, on. I get all of that. I get all of that. I'm just trying to let the young boys know about it. Jawahar Sarkar, I get how bad it was. I'm just saying that we have to figure out what are you comparing it with is my only question. Nobody is saying it was a good period and we are, the reason we are having this it show is, is to figure Hitler, out how you actually can... actually submerged all his opponents so that he can become elected dictator. Uh, dictator. Same way Mrs. Gandhi, 29 organizations have been banned. All the opponents, Mrs. Atal Bihari, Vajpayee, Murarji Desai, uh, uh, you know, point point all the Chandrasekhar, all, okay. whole, whole, all of them, five of them became prime minister after that. Okay, uh. Jawahar Sarkar, Jawahar Sarkar, let me just come back to you. The comparisons that we are seeing, um, 
not just between the emergency and the Holocaust and, and, and Indira Gandhi with Hitler, but also the comparison of 43 years ago with what is happening today. What is your take on it? Because you have written, you know, expressing concern about subversion of institutions in a manner not dissimilar to what's happened in the past. So lots of comparisons are being made, and I'm wondering whether this analogy is any better than this analogy. I mean, comparing the emergency with the Holocaust may be an overstating. Is it also overstating to compare the emergency with anything that's happening today? I'll come in from two roles, two distinct roles. One was that uh, I was 23, put in six years of active politics in Presidency College, opposed to emergency, and then I come in as a civil servant, taken during that period. I, I witnessed what went on. Now, what distresses us is a fact that same history is being repeated in a very covert manner. Indira Gandhi did it in an overt manner. There is a covert disruption of national institutions. There is no press, no media in India, save one or two brave hearts, who can ever come out with what they think is true. People are distressed with the subversion of institutions, which is an essential feature of this emergency or that emergency. I have described it in one of my writings as a creeping emergency, an emergency that comes in easy installments. We are bothered about this. And the other thing that, that again bothers us or distresses us is why are you picking on an issue that's 43 years old? If you can go back to 43 years, let's go back 33 years before, and you'll get the answer why they are doing it. 33 years before 43 years is 1942 when India's most vibrant part of the freedom movement was being enacted. And the people who opposed it are the ones who are now coming up to exaggerate their role during this very freedom distressing movement. period of emergency. Mm. It is true that the RSS did fill up the jails. They could afford to do it. Very few people had the resources to go on filling up. But that is the only time, that's the only time, I repeat, since 1947, that they, or before 1947, that they participated in the national mainstream. So it is imperative for them to highlight that role where they were part of the Indian struggle. Now, let's get that aside. What's more relevant to us is that the same history is being repeated. Okay. The institutions are being subverted. People are under a pall of fear. A senior senior journalist by Kuldeep Nair has sent it, uh, mentioned it two days ago. There's a pall of fear. So we need to discuss that as well. Please. All right. Well, okay, we do have uh, joining us now Salman Kurshid, of course, being law minister, very senior leader of the Congress, uh, Congress party. Mr. Kurshid, a lot of attention this week on the emergency and also on the lessons that all of us need to take from the emergency for the future. Well, let me just be very clear that this is... Um, uh, in the remote past. We are 43 years onwards. Now, in 43 years, we've been in government. Um, other parties have been government. Now, the BJP is in government. Now, is it that uh, we haven't learned anything, that if there was something to learn? And the learning uh, cannot just be limited to one party. It has to be essentially learning from by, by all parties. And I hope that this is, this is so, that this is a fact that everyone has learned from it. As far as the emergency is concerned, people think that there is a complete and clear mandate that the uh, emergency was wrong. Now, it was contextual. Whether today you can look back and say it was wrong or right, I think is, is, uh, is neither here nor there. There was a context, extraordinary circumstances, and the people at that time, and they were not just ordinary people, some very wise people came to a conclusion that this was necessary. They then called it off, had an election, they lost and therefore clearly heard from the people that this was not called for. 18 months later, the same people then re-elected, the same, same people who were said to be responsible for the emergency, and I believe that that was a closure on that chapter. Now, I don't know why 43 years later, somebody needs to reopen this chapter and for what purpose. Well, I think, you know, that it's always important to learn lessons from the past and learn lessons from, from history. For example, some in your party and in other parties have said that it's worth looking at the emergency to, to make sure it's not repeated again. There are some who have said that there are aspects of it that may even be happening now. 
No, I, there is no question of not raising that issue. I mean, if there is a problem with freedom of press today, if there is a problem of joblessness today, if there is a problem of police oppression and misuse of, of security agencies, if there is a problem of putting a question mark on freedom of expression, each of those, each of those on merits would be and are discussed by the Congress party, and that we would take up each of those, those fights independently and separately. Is it necessary to go back 43 years? And if you're going back 43 years, why not 200 years? Why not 5,000 years? What sense does it make? There, is, there have been there have been specific milestones. 25 years after the emergency was a milestone. Everyone wanted to, everyone wanted to look back and then take a view, an objective view, hopefully, after 25 years. But why now? Why the 43rd year? Why was it different from 42nd? To the extent that people say that there is inconsistency between those who oppose the emergency and impose similar things today, that's, that's certainly something that we should all be interested in. But I believe that if we take up things specifically on merit, that is good enough. Certainly an undeclared emergency, standalone argument, uh, an undeclared emergency is much worse than an emergency that has been declared. No, so, so are you one of those who is saying that there is some sort of undeclared emergency in place right now? Well, certainly, certainly it's happening today. I think there's no doubt that it's happening today. It's much worse is happening today. The government is, in a sense, permitting uh, vigilantism to take over the country. It's, it's, it's allowing the street justice to go into the hands of people who themselves should be at the receiving end of justice. Uh, there is a serious problem about freedom of press. There is a serious problem about freedom of expression. Okay. There is a serious problem about the manner in which agencies are being uh, used against the average Indian citizen. And there is a sense of fear and concern. Yes, of course. And I think each one of these, each one of these can be handled without necessarily talking about an emergency. People who call it an undeclared emergency are hoping perhaps to draw something from some element of the emergency. I think stand alone, it's bad enough. If somebody is slaughtered or lynched, you don't have to go back to an emergency or you don't have to go back 5,000 years to say that this is something that happened 5,000 years ago as well. By itself, I think, the moral issue is quite clear, quite transparent, and I believe has no defense whatsoever as far as the government is concerned. We need to discuss that, and I'm, I'm going to turn my attention to that in just a couple of minutes. But Sandeep Mahapatra, the role of the RSS in the emergency, you just heard what Jawahar Sarkar saying that the RSS is trying to you know, whitewash what happened earlier. It's also a week where we've been seeing a fairly senior BJP, member of the BJP right now, articles in the writings which he did in 2000, where he sort of said that the RSS was busy trying to apologize uh, during the emergency. Uh, uh, that, that article has been circulated widely. How do you respond to what he said about the role of the RSS? No, Vikram, I'd like to go back to your first question because I couldn't speak. Number one, we should ask ourselves, by debating this as to why, 43 years hence from 1975, the way the UA emergency was remembered this year around. Are we turning apologists to ourselves about what happened in emergency, number one? Why it should not be remembered? That is the question that we need to ask. Because all those who are with the Jansang and the RSS are on the other side. They don't see anything right to celebrate or, 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 or talk about emergency during the 1975 to 1977 phase. Secondly, coming to Mr. Jawar Sir Sirkar's point about the role of RSS, a canard has been spread and spread throughout to belittle the uh, role played by RSS. I must remind him, if he thinks Jayaprakash Narayan was a hero, of the emergency era in 1977 when he came to RSS uh, to an RSS program. He hailed the role played by the RSS. He said that you are the true revolutionary organizing during the emergency period. And if people call you fascist, I am also a fascist. So if Joy Prakash Narayan has said that at that point in time, people like Mr. Sarkar and his ilk, who has been trying to belittle the role of the RSS, I must request him to read about an article that was published in December of 1976 in Economist. The Economist says that the RSS played a vital role. And because of the RSS, democracy got restored. Okay. And therefore, to say that RSS did not play a role, and please remember that every year during the 25th to 26th June, RSS has been 
celebrating okay. this occasion to, be, to, to be discuss emergency honest. and what happened in during the 75 to 77 phase. So this is a critical period of our Indian history and this should be taught okay. in the it Indian history It should be taught, we should learn the Rather lessons, will but to be forget. fair, okay, can I just now turn back to the other issue that was raised, you know, whether Hitler was a fascist and whether what happened in 75 was an episode of fascism and whether the RSS was fascist or not fascist at that time is, uh, I think, a slightly moot point to the other issue that has been raised right now. Could it happen again? How do you prevent it from happening again? Is it happening again? I want to get everyone's views on that. Let me start with you, uh, uh, you know, Kalpana Sharma. You know, all of us as journalists grew up admiring, respecting the sort of work that you did, Kuldeep Nair did, Mark Tully did, and others did during the emergency. It is really a lesson for everybody. How do you stand up and speak in an atmosphere of fear, of terror, having to go to a censor board, having the courage to go out and try and find your own printing press and write? I think that's a lesson in courage that everyone should learn. Uh, whenever the question comes of a check to freedom, whenever anybody tries to interfere with freedom, that's the sort of courage that, that ideally should be displayed. Um, maybe if you could share an anecdote or two about that and the lessons that you would give to everyone else. Uh, how do you prevent it from ever happening again? Yeah, so um, I would say that, you know, I think um, the thing about the emergency was it was a formal emergency. And that provision I know now has been changed after the 1977 elections. So I personally don't know whether there would be another of this kind, though one can never tell because we never expected anything like that to happen in 1975. As far as the media is concerned, let me say this, that, you know, um, there were media guidelines, there was press censorship, uh, but many people ceded far more territory than they needed to, many of the mainstream media. And, you know, uh, all right, the 20-point program had to be published, so they published it. But there were many spaces that they just did not even have the courage to exploit. And it was left to the smaller papers. Maybe we had less to lose that we took this on and we decided that we would stretch this as much as we could. And I see a similar thing today. I mean, under the excuse of, you know, the fact that the media is dependent on the corporate sector and it cannot challenge the government too far, many media houses have ceded territory. They are actually repeating the narrative that the government has set on so many matters. And, uh, you know, I, I feel that that is a lesson that has not been learned because of the emergency by the media, that we have the freedom, we have to use it, we have to push it as far as we can, uh, even in so-called normal circumstances when there is no uh, emergency. And if you do not, actually you allow a government to and the state to in fact control you uh, without the formal uh, measures that were taken as they were taken during the emergency. And this is, this is what I see today as far as the media is concerned. The difference is we have the digital space which so far has not been controlled. All right. So, I mean, it used to be said at that time that, that, that they crawled when asked to bend and you are saying that that, that wasn't really required. So, Mark Tali, would you, would you agree with her that to some extent, and I know this charge is often made these days, that sections of the media perhaps not performing the role that they, that they should be performing in, in questioning the government, in questioning whatever is happening, in perhaps bending a little bit too much? Well, I think there are the, the sections of the media which were quite clearly supporting the government. Um, and this happens, uh, it happens in Britain as well. Um, I think there is an exaggeration in this, though, because there are um, channels, and your own channel, I would say openly here, I've seen plenty of criticism of the government on this channel. Uh, every day I read the Indian Express, uh, and I see their articles highly critical. Uh, I've written one myself and it's been published in the Indian Express. Um, so I don't, uh, I, I think we can take this criticism of the press too far. But nevertheless, it is something that we have to continue as journalists to be vigilant about, because it can happen all too easily, and uh, it must not happen, because the uh, uh, action against the press was one of the main reasons um, uh, why the emergency was able to go through. And as Arun Jaitley said, sometimes it can be self-defeating for a government also because if you're not allowing the f free movement of well, negative opinion, you, know, that, you that, start believing your own propaganda. I think that's what That's, that's what an Jaitley's. interesting point. And only the other day I said actually that uh, we have to thank Indra Gandhi for um, censoring the press in one way 
because if she had not censored it, uh, then she would have known uh, what was going wrong um, and uh, she might not have held the election, but she might have tried to put what was going wrong right. The so, comparison of the emergency with what's happening today, you think it's overblown? I mean, you, you were saying that the comparison with the Holocaust is a bit overdone. Comparison of the presence. You know, the Holocaust, I just want to make this point. It really is like comparing apples with oranges or something like that. They're two completely different things. It's, uh, that's ridiculous. But uh, I, all I'm saying is we have to be vigilant, but I certainly would not compare the situation with the press now uh, with what it was uh, during the emergency. All right, let me get everyone's views very quickly on this subject, you know, preserving institutions. Press is one thing, uh, Pavan Varma, other institutions, because we keep on I, hearing I, concerns, I, you know, election commission, judiciary, I, institutions I, under threat. I'll take a minute to give you a primer of a five or six point. You see, the constitution has been amended, so you cannot perhaps impose an emergen emergency as you did in the past. But I think all of us to citizens today need to be vigilant about five or six things. One is signs of authoritarianism of any kind in any government. Two, absence of inner party democracy in political parties, absolute leaders, absolute followers. Third, respect for laws, not only in letter, but in spirit. Respect for institutions, okay. not in letter, but in spirit. Respect for dissent and space for dialogue. I want to say that you can bring in an atmosphere like the emergency, not today, but tomorrow, when any of these criteria are I not noticed by a saying. vigilant populace which forms a part of a democracy. Yeah, and I want to point the finger at you, Vikram, if you don't mind. 20 seconds more. Now what have I First. Done? <laughs> what First. did I do? I haven't declared emergency no, on anyone. I'll tell you what. Nor am I a dictator, me, nor do me, I have inner party democracy. Let, let me just finish. <laughs> I'll tell you, the co-option of the media is perhaps one of the most easily achieved goals. But why are you pointing a figure at me specifically? No, no. I, I, that you I, can I, accuse I, of the media not, in general. Not, not I'm talking There's about other the media. media which... Uh, not you, okay, so as you as a if you're referring, If you're referring to any co-opted media, please mention whom you're referring okay. to as co-opted. Okay. I, 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 I don't think you're necessarily I, I, referring to uh, me I've or been anyone both, on this channel. I've been both a diplomat and I'm a politician. So yeah. I'm not taking names. Okay. But I want to make two important points. It'll take me the media shouldn't get co-opted, no, that's what you're saying. One is a black censored page as happened in the emergency is better than the kind of incipient co-option that you may see you need to clap on this. channels after channels and papers after papers peddle only one point of view without space this sufficient space for another point of view it's a very serious matter it's not about today it okay. can happen tomorrow but who is watching so who's keeping a top so now, now that you say so much you might as well tell me who second, are you naming second, I mean, for this audience know. For the audience, audience, I know who you're referring to. The say, audience probably knows no, who you're referring to. I want to say to, I want to, to, say to this audience, that's hmm. not about the, you, Vikram, don't become so personal. No, I'm not. I know it's not about me. Sometimes I'm just saying to, say. to you that this is a danger. Second, for all of you, because all of you come from the middle class, the middle class of this country was the most easily persuaded about dictatorial rule. Ah. They said train time pe chalti hai, danda chalta hai, why not? And today, ah. the same middle really, class... Really, really interesting point. The same I tell you something. class today, by this the way... This week I read an article, this week I read an article saying that sometime that the iron fist of Narendra Modi may be required to help with delivery. So I'm just no, saying... It's always it there. The part that voice is always part of the there. same thesis but that I'm, you're talking I'm just about. making this point. The middle class were crawled when it was asked to bend. It co-opted itself along with the media. Okay. It co-opted itself entirely with the dictatorial the state. Please be vigilant citizens. Okay, Take one it. line then I want to get yeah, Chandra I just got three points. So I agree with him. Internal uh, uh, party de uh, democracy. Just to point out, 1980 mm -hmm. we were formed, that is Bharti Indra Party was formed. Ten presidents with 14 terms. Indian National Congress, four generations, still the president is from the same family. So that is the difference between Congress okay, and the BJP. Two, I'll tell you one more score. point. And let me see, 1955, Nehruji gets Bharat Ratna. 1971, Indraji gets uh, Bharat Ratna. 1991, Rajivji gets Bharat Ratna. But Ambedkar, 
who talked about social reforms and the this thing gets Bharat Ratna in 1990. Patel gets Bharat Ratna in 1991. Who gave because, them? you know, the family who only owns them? this party, this country. Guljari Lalanda, one okay, of the prime ministers, gets in 1997. And Pandit Mandar Mohan Bolivar gets in 2015 because this authoritarian government comes. Okay, fine. Chandra, Chand Chandra Bose, Isn't Chandra Bose. But has I, to by can I, I want to get everyone else in. I want to get everyone. Some basic lessons have been drawn. Protect your institutions. Make sure that all authoritarian tendencies are resisted. Do not get co-opted. This is like a primer for how do you prevent the emergency or emergency-like situation from ever happening again. Chandra Bose, do you substantially agree with those points? Yes. You see, emergency was declared for the wrong reasons. I think that is what we need Can to understand. Can there be a right reason? It was not necessary, but it was declared. Let me finish. We have had a personal experience with emergency. My father, Amiyonath Bose, who defeated Sachin Choudhury, who was the finance minister in Indira Gandhi's cabinet in 1967, was kept under 24-hour surveillance during emergency. And, of course, the Congress government under Indira Gandhi did not have the guts to arrest him because we belong to a freedom fighters family, but we were kept under surveillance. We, our movements were restricted, our move, movements were kept under surveillance, and we were spied upon. Yeah. Now, as a, as a free citizen of free India, why should the human rights... You see, as a, as a rights activist, I would like to state human rights were violated, serious violation of human rights took place, not only with politicians, with common citizens, sir, with press, with media, with How do we prevent it from happening again, right sir, is the question express. that I'm asking. Not now, next year, ever. Yes. That's the key you lesson. See, How do you prevent it, it from happening again? It is a warning. Again? Exactly. We should not have emergency kind of situation ever again. It is, of course, not comparable to Holocaust or any other disaster we have faced in the world. It is not comparable. Let's face that. But emergency was a nightmare which we should not have again. Okay. And no party, no political party should ever think of calling or declaring emergency. All right. J Jawar Sarkar, how do you prevent it from ever happening again? The protection of institutions. Pavan Varma said a couple of things. You've, you've often written about it. What can all of us as citizens and individuals do? And are you sometimes, by the way, the other aspect that was briefly referred to, which, which I agreed with, even during the emergency, there were some people who said, well, you know, the roads are running on time and 20th point program and these are all good things to do. Is there ever a justification for giving up liberties or freedoms? There is none. There is none. I have lived through the entire period of Jayaprakash movement, uh, participated in, in my own small way. But the point here is that we need to be acu acutely conscious of the erosion of national level institutions. I resigned from one, but look at the drama that happened thereafter. Uh, the, the, the minister, the, the, rather, uh, the minister who came in and the chairman of Prasar Bharti went on a slanging match, went on a free for all, uh, WWF, over an institution that doesn't belong to either of them. So this same way, the, the censor board, we had a, had a person of uh, dubious uh, virtues. We have, uh, we had somebody uh, do, uh, dubious in merits, I think you might mean, uh, sir. <laughs> dubious <laughs> merits, not, not virtues. virtues. <laughs> so, dubious merits. Now, the point is that we need to get over this hype. One leader, absolute, infallible, mighty leader with mighty punches leading India together to, to the 22nd or whatever century. We need to get to reality. And in order to do that, as Pavan put it so beautifully, we need the freedom of airing our views. Uh, Chandra Bose mentioned about surveillance. Can this government tell us with their hand on their heart that people like us who are dissenting are not under surveillance? Vikram, are okay. you under surveillance? You would know. So let's not talk about no. surveillance and stuff like now that. Now that I you mention it, government, uh, so I, I look at my phone. Uh, I'm looking at my phone again so, with with weary uh, eyes after you just said what you so, said. But, but this okay. Is, no, what do you say? Okay. So, so, I, I, think a, I think it's a valid point. point is, Kalpana, Kal we need to be conscious. Okay. Um, 
you need to be conscious. Kal Kalpana, let me get some thoughts on you, preventing it from happening again. And I'm going to come back this way to get final thoughts from everyone here. Okay, so, uh, you know, Vikram, I just want to clarify. When I said that about the press, uh, Mark Tully said uh, it was an exaggeration. Of course, there are exceptions. But uh, I'm talking about what is the generally prevalent situation. You know, the exceptions do not make the rule. And that is what I was saying about the Indian press and the Indian media today. Um, to uh, avoid uh, 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 an emergency of the kind that we had in 1975, I think, as I think Mr. Varma said that there have been changes in the law. But I think to avoid uh, a situation that mimics what happened during the emergency, we have to work really hard to ensure that our democratic institutions are protected from okay. the kind of erosion that we are seeing over time. And I think that is the only safeguard. And within that, as a journalist, I feel the media is a very important part of that. All right. Well, Chandra Bose, uh, uh, Kalpana Sharma, Jawar Sarkar, thank you for joining us. We are, we are, we are starting to reach the end of this. Pranav, Pranav, let me just get a final word from you. With uh, two sections, one, he leveled charges on our leaders who are not there. For their information, I want to tell them that uh, Nehru got uh, uh, Bharat Ratna when he returned from abroad and the president, who was always not uh, in his favor, he was so happy with him that at the airport itself he ended up announcing. Who was the president at that and point in time? Rajendra Prasad ji. And, okay. uh, and Indira ji, when she won uh, war against Pakistan, opposition also supported so her. And they gave her. Anything. And Rajiv ji got. Hold on. Okay. We have Rajiv ji got it for Patel and Ambedkar. I'll come to the okay, point. Okay, let's come to the I'll relevant to the point. How do you prevent it from happening again? I'll tell you what. No, the question that I wanted to delve as, delve as, as the opposition, as the voice of the opposition, and they need to know. I'm not saying it's situation like emergency, but I'm saying that there are four pillars of, to, of, the, of democracy. And if you look at parliament, there are no more, it's, it, it, debates and discussions were meant to be the order of the day. What is happening is ordinances. In the last session, 27 days, there was no question hour. Now, talk about executives. The external affairs minister is running uh, like a passport office. DOPT, which was meant to be the pointing authority, which was meant to be with the MOS, prime minister's office has it. Judiciary, I don't want to talk about press. Nobody in the in, in present, I mean, ever in this country was called prestitute. And if you talk to pressmen alone, you will know what kind of life they live in. And what lessons have we learned from it? I don't think people have learned lessons from it. The government, which criticizes democracy, uh, the uh, emergency, when they came to power, they dismissed okay. nine Ill, 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 uh, 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 democratically elected government. And they dismissed it. So you need okay, to tell Rajay, what Indra Gandhi... Okay, we are, we are, we are in fact... Let me get yes. a final word from you. Yeah, my final word would be, I agree with Mark Tully. He says that there is an exaggeration, and yes, there is an exaggeration. Are we facing a situation like 1973, when three judges, senior judges of the Supreme Court were superseded? You're doing this today. Please, let me complete. And A.N. Ray was foisted at the CJI. Those guys were talking about an undeclared emergency. They went after the Supreme Court CJI with an impeachment motion. 43 they years back. Please. Today, sir, I'm talking about two months back. You are doing you this now. You tried to impeach the CJI on phony charges, and you are talking Not about a subversion of democracy Boss, and subversion of institutions. It. So these are the same people you will know who it. can't... Please, okay. let me complete. You will know it. These are the same people who can't see anybody else to be ruling this country. And, they are, and in 2015, you are an intolerance brigade. Now, in 2018, we are seeing a brigade who are saying that undeclared emergency. Is there a downfall in undeclared emergency? The kind of press freedom that is being exercised in this country, day in and day out, the prime minister, the higher officials of this country are put to task, are called names, and you are still saying that press is being, you know, subverted. <laughs> this is the okay. kind of logic that is being given, okay. and therefore, I just have saying that, I just and, have three and coming sir. to the last point, last okay. point. Three lines, three Vikram, lines. Vikram, so the last see, point, just a second, sir. Article 352 has been amended long back, thanks to the Janta Party government. The okay. Prime Minister, for the uh, matter, the cabinet doesn't have the freedom under the Article 352 as it, it stands today to declare anything called emergency. It was not the like this. Emergency where cannot be declared. Emergency, emergency declared cannot be declared, but other ways it's three three lines. Three lines. Okay. One, one line is this Congress led center used Article 356 to dislodge elected state governments for more than 100 times. Your not only emergency. Your partners yes, are yes, one number two. These are the same Congress who caused army mirrors. killer of civilian when they eliminate terrorists. This is the same Congress which goes and fights okay. with the CGI when National me. Heraldicals came up. Same election, time. same Congress. When they lose election, they question the CVCs and the EVMs. And let me remind you, Nehru ji se jagada hua Subhas Babu bar. Indra ji se jagada hua Chandra Shekhar bar. Okay, okay. Nehru ji se jagada hua. Three lines you've gone into three lines already. This is what is called. Come on, last word from you. Come on, last word from you. I just want to say, 
that maybe the emerg emergency cannot be resurrected, but its spirit can haunt any democracy at any time, and we should all be careful. What we are, what, what, what should Your we be afraid of? Just two things: conspiracy of silence and capitulation of conscience. If this happens in a democracy, that those who could speak when they should have spoken, I can assure you, in some form or the other. Emergency will come back to this country. Okay, would you agree with that? That emergency itself okay. cannot ever come back, but you've got to be careful. I mean, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance, as has often I been said. I think there's a more fundamental point than that. I think the emergency occurred because of the collapse of the institutions. I think what is required is eternal vigilance in this country about the institutions. And what is needed so much within the institutions is the core, esprit de corps which will enable them, a civil servant, to stand up and say, I'm not going to be bullied, I'm not going to be treated in this way, I'm going to do what I should do. A journalist to stand up to the, there. And for the BJP, I would say this, that their own party, I often used to write, is the only genuinely democratic party in this country. I would not say the same of it now. So it's the institutions which have to be preserved and have to preserve themselves. All right, I think that's a perfect note on which to end this program. Thank you all so much for being with us. Institutions have to be preserved and at all costs. That's one thing which the emergency has taught us. And that's the one lesson that we all have to, do, to, have to keep in mind from what we've just heard. Maintain that eternal vigilance to make sure that nothing can ever erode our institutions. You're watching The Big Five. We'll be back again next week.